So now, here we go. The moment begins. I'm going to start off with this one. I thought it would somewhat set the tone. This is President Obama's, I guess, campaign poster. Mm -hmm. You had referenced it in a TEDx, which we'll show some pictures uh, here in a moment that you gave. Why is that important to you, this particular photo? So I included that in my TEDx Bellarmine New Talk because mm -hmm. so much of our work at Ideas X Lab is based on hope theory, mm -hmm. which breaks down into goals, pathways, and agency. Okay. But hope, as understood that way, is a leading indicator of health and well-being for children and adults. And so President Obama's campaign was also grounded in hope theory. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, gr that's a tremendous way to be able to bring a group of people together and really channel that type of inspiration. And so we wanted people to understand that when we talk about hope and hope theory, it's not just something that's mm -hmm. you know sitting in a university, but this is something sure. that has been part of national movements. So perception's reality, is yeah. that fair? Yeah. I love this one. This is one of my favorite photos of you. Thank you. When was that taken, roughly? Couple. So that was at Ideas X Lab's Catalytic Forces convening okay. in 2017. That's great. And we go way back. This was a photo that you took, I guess, back during your... So I was actually homeschooled up until 10th grade. Wow. So my first year in school was 10th grade, and this photo, um, I Becomes. lived Boom. in the dark room, and mm -hmm. so I took a black and white series of photos of my sister, and then this was an oil painting that I did That's great. based on that photo. That's great. And so here's your first graduation. That is my graduation from Floyd Central, mm -hmm. so that is uh, my four siblings and my parents with me That's in Indiana. Awesome. And then here we are. So jumping forward a little bit, that is my Bellarmine graduation in 2011. That's great. I love this photo. I feel like you're uh, <laughs> one of these action movies about to start is what it looks like to me. So that was a really fun photo shoot. Mm -hmm. That was for the Louisville Business First 40 Under 40. Mm -hmm. We were in the presidential suite of the Omni, which That's had great. just opened. Mm -hmm. And here you are with some fellow recipients. Yes, that is a group of us at the 40 Under 40 luncheon. Mm -hmm. And then here's your still and the quote that I referenced earlier that's in the list. And I'm a member of 40 Under 42, and I actually spoke to you about this opportunity at that event. One thing led to another. Here it's we nice are. It's nice how those things happen. It is, connections. And what's this? I love this photo. So that was taken my senior year okay. of high school at Floyd Central. Mm -hmm. And I quickly became friends with uh, one of my best friends during that time, Amelia. Mm -hmm. And so she was the one that actually introduced me to makeup, mm -hmm. and I have consistently worn makeup ever since. That's great. And this looks like an outing, maybe? So that was back visiting with my three sisters, Meg, Patsy, and Anna. That's and awesome. one of the activities we did was go to museums, and they each had to pick a piece mm -hmm. that was their favorite, and that mm -hmm. was part of our discussion afterward. What does this picture represent to you? So we recently launched an initiative called Our Emotional Wellbeing. Mm -hmm. And so using a co-creation process led by artists to impact hope and belonging with mm -hmm. young people 12 to 20. Mm -hmm. And each team member with Ideas X Lab, Hannah Drake, Chris Radke, and myself each created one of the first arts activities before everything got started. Mm -hmm. And so mine was called Showing Up 100. Mm -hmm. And so I took a portrait of each participant. Okay. And then on the other half of the portrait, was a collage that they made out of magazines. So whatever represented what showing up 100 meant to them, mm -hmm. whether or not they were at a place in life where they felt like they could show up, but what it would be like to mm -hmm. show up 100. Mm -hmm. And this is the first of many fashion, um, how would I put it, choices. Because <laughs> you have lots of choices, yes. which I like. So one of the things, um, given both my body size and just my personal style preferences, mm -hmm. shopping can be really difficult. And mm -hmm. so over three years ago, I started collaborating with Gunnar Dethridge oh, to okay. create different pieces. So Gunnar used to be based here in Louisville. He was on Project Runway, but he has been, uh, the suit is by Gunnar. We designed it together. Gunnar, so as we think, props here, man. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> as we think about what it means to look like, a professional. Mm -hmm. um, this is not a suit you would have been able to find in the men's department with an OB belt, but right. we created it. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And this is a group outing or a group photo? So this was also from Ideas X Labs Catalytic Forces event. Okay. And so those were artists and partners from different communities we were working with. And this looks like a gathering, but I'm not quite sure. It looks outdoors. So that was during our launch of One Poem at a Time where we replaced the billboards okay. in Smoketown and we had a That's historical great. poetry walk. 
here you are with your good friend, I believe, Hannah. That is my team member, Hannah. And so yes. one of the things that we talked about earlier was mm -hmm. making time to be able to reflect and think about the future, future mm -hmm. of work. And so we are starting to go monthly for outdoor walking meetings. And we started with the Giants at Bernheim. That's a great thing if you haven't been out to it, folks. And then this is another one of your fashion choices. So that is another one. That is my dear friend, Tanya, yes. who also is wearing Gunner Deathridge. But he created this piece. This is for... Uh, was for the 2019 Kentucky Derby. That is great. And this is uh, singing. Looks like you're singing. That is me singing again. So I am a firm believer that sometimes you have to force your own hand and commit to something to make yourself get up there. And Tanya uh, partnered with me to sing a duet at one of our recent fundraisers in the spring. Now, I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> I don't really like this. What is this? So that was a 2017 Gunner Deathridge for wow. the Kentucky Derby. Wow. And so thinking about how do you expand, the tradition of the Kentucky Derby has a very specific look. It does. And there's a lot of room for expanding that. Uh -huh. And so we had fu really <laughs> fun with that outfit. Yeah, we'll have some more photos on that in a moment. Now, what is this? So that is um, another Gunner Deathridge piece, <laughs> and that was a sample. but. That day specifically was to go to support the Louisville Ballet mm -hmm. um, when they had gotten, um, had some public negative feedback, but also a lot of support around mm -hmm. an LGBTQ piece that they were doing. And so we were going to watch That's that and great. support them. This is Hannah again, I believe. That is. So um, Jefferson County Public Schools just participated in the Aspen Challenge. And so Hannah and I were asked to do a talk as a part of that to the mm -hmm. young people, getting back to the process over the, mm -hmm. the finished product. That's what we were talking to them about. Okay. All the things you learn and all that capacity that's built is so much more valuable than just winning. Mm -hmm. Singing again. So that was with Karen Chavez. Yep. So that was my first performance ever. Wow. Pride at the Museum at the Speed. And we sang a duet, and it was such a fun time. You are an individual who likes to get out of your comfort zone, that is for sure. And then this is the dichotomy, if you will, at least my observation of here's Josh running. There's the marathon. The marathon. So that was in Paris at yeah. the Gay Games. Yeah, and tell the audience what the Gay Games is about. So the Gay Games happens every four years. It changes countries every year. Oh, okay. And you don't actually have to qualify to participate. You can just sign up, but it's a majority of the sports you would see at the regular Olympics. So mm -hmm. it gives you a time to come together with people from across the world and participate in the different physical activities that mm -hmm. you really enjoy. And here's one of your first loves, photography. Mm -hmm. You're working here, I guess, or maybe having fun. So that was in Smoketown. We, um, in partnership with the community, designed a Smoketown is Worthy of Everything mural. Mm -hmm. And then we launched a Worthy of Everything campaign, and that was one of me taking a portrait for that. Now I'm going to guess that these pictures were taken while you were running. Maybe not. But. So those are, so that series is called Running Lights. Okay. And so I used a long exposure camera. And so the neon lights that you see flashing across the images are the lights that were attached to me. So you can't see my body, but you can see the movement. I don't even want to know how you and captured it. And that one is from our house in Denmark. Oh, wow. Okay. And then here looks like you know, the sunrise or sunset. That's the sunrise. The Big Four Bridge and the waterfront is my favorite place to run. So mm -hmm. people who follow me have seen mm -hmm. probably more images of it than they want yes, to. Yes, and he goes there in the dead of winter, too. Look. I do. Yes. It's, well, there's something really... That was... Um, that was in the winter of last year, oh, wow. actually. Okay. But there's something really amazing about just running through snow that has not been touched, and it's a, like a winter wonderland. It is ethereal, at least for me. I've, I've, I've not necessarily ran through it, but been out in it. So, oh, this is a, I love this one. So that image is from my 31st birthday, and I went out for a run, and um, it was just a really tremendous time for reflection and thinking about what the future Process. holds. Here's one of your many speeches so, or talks. As part say. of our work with Ideas X Lab and partnership with the Louisville mm -hmm. Health Advisory Board in UofL and others, we did the Year of Arts Healing in Action. And so that was part of that event. And this is Walden School, maybe? Yes. So Walden School does an annual Pride Day. Wow. And so it was all of, I did a keynote for all of their high school students, and they had really turned out that day, and it was mm -hmm. tremendous to see. They were teaching sign language. Um, it was really wonderful to see how well-rounded and how supported and it was. And that's how much our culture has evolved. I mean, when I was your age or, or had I been in elementary school, that would have never even been, would have, just wouldn't have happened. Just wouldn't have happened. I mean, it's amazing how humans evolved. And now we get to the, the interesting fellow. Tell us a little bit about this guy. 
So that is my partner in life, Theo. Okay. We co-founded Ideas X Lab together over six years ago. And that photo is from the Palace of Versailles when we were over in Paris for wow. the Gay Games. And so now Theo has um, launched the Center for Creative Place Healing mm -hmm. at UofL, so we're now able to collaborate on projects, um, which has been a wonderful thing to have continue. And tell us what's going on here. So recently, Queer Kentucky was an online publication that launched here in Louisville, um, but covering all of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And they did a piece, um, a piece featuring me and Spencer, who runs it, takes Polaroids. Mm -hmm. And here we are, the TEDx talk, which is not easy for anyone <laughs> that's never done one, and those that have done one, no. <laughs> yeah. So that was at TEDx Bellarmine U. That was my second TEDx talk. Okay. So thankfully. By, by the time I got up there, I've realized that the stress comes two weeks in advance, mm -hmm. and I just do a lot of prep and get the story in my head and then figure out what's going to come out <laughs> as I'm up there. So I ended up cutting two minutes while I was up there, but it all, it all turned out okay. That's great. Yeah, I've watched the video. It looks great. You don't look nervous or you Thank look you. very calm and very self-assured and confident. And this looks like an outing with Theo. So that is, and actually in the middle is my Aunt Pam and oh, okay. my cousin Bethany. And so that's who I lived with my senior year of high school. And they continue to be in the area and be extremely supportive, and that's been a wonderful asset to have. Now, is this a, a running event, or what is this? So that was the Better Than Hate Community Walk. Mm. So the N-word was spray-painted on the Big Four Bridge, uh -huh. and my team member Hannah started a dialogue on Twitter that then mm -hmm became a news story that became a walk of hundreds of people going out to claim a space that needed to be for everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, it was amazing to see the breadth and scope of who showed up to make sure that everyone felt welcome. Mm -hmm. Now I want to talk about this logo for a moment of your, of your company, because to me, at least symbolically for me, it has the creative you know, ideas and it has the analytical mm -hmm. part of you lab. And it's very efficient. You know, it's black and white. It's pretty basic, but yet you're a colorful individual. Did you help design this, or did you help at least pick the name? Curious about the mm -hmm. evolution or genesis. So the name has you've always had the word ideas in it, but mm -hmm. has evolved over time. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about the X, you can kind of think about it like a variable. So sure. our work is at this intersection of arts, culture, health, and hope. Mm -hmm. And so all of our all of our initiatives, all of our collaborations are really thinking about how ideas and how that creativity brings it all together to impact change. That's great. And this is a photo I suspect you took running. I want to say that So that the was at Y River, Maryland for the Aspen Institute oh, Executive okay. Seminar, and it is a running photo as well. So it's a long exposure. It was very early in the morning. Now, I love this, one of these fashion choices, very different. This is Derby Day, I believe. That is Derby 2018. So that is another, that was my second year collaborating with mm -hmm. Gunnar Dethridge on Derby. And that was also my last day of drinking. Yeah. Um, so one of the things as my journey has evolved was mm -hmm. that um, the way that we started drinking when I was very young was a lot of alcohol consumption and not only did that impact how my brain processed mm -hmm. drinking, so that drunk part that people normally feel I don't really have, okay. and it went from tipsy to blackout. Oh, wow. And that's a very unhealthy thing in and of itself. Sure. And then I also have an extremes personality, mm -hmm. just in how I'm built. Mm -hmm. And so I was um, at Theo's parents' house in Eastern Kentucky. We were standing, I was standing on a bridge, um, just like thinking and prioritizing the things I cared about. And somewhere subconsciously, my mind made a list of what was the thing that was gonna, could derail all of it, mm -hmm. and that was alcohol. And wow. so I slowly started to try to understand if I could just limit it, and my mind doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a wonderful day at the track, mm -hmm. and I had a mint julep, and it was enjoyable, but it was the time to make a change mm -hmm. um, so that I could choose what the future sure. was, alcohol didn't get to pick. And this is a beautiful picture of you and Theo, the same day. That was Derby. the same day we were there with Derby Diversity and Business Summit. Mm -hmm. And here's a lovely picture of you two guys. And that is from the Aspen Institute Executive Seminar. Okay. And I really like this one. To me, it looks like the beginning of some action movie again. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to go solve a crime or something. So that was right when we opened our office that used to be on Market Street. Okay. And so that office, historically, about 20 years ago, it started as an artist studio before mm -hmm. Market Street became what it is. And mm -hmm. it was nice to have be able to bring that creative energy back. Now, this is the Derby Diversity Business Summit. Can you talk a little bit about 
the evolution of that. So I think Absolutely. it would be nice for the audience to know about it. It's pretty so amazing. The Derby Diversity and Business Summit is headed toward its third year mm -hmm. and brings together diverse owned businesses and diversity suppliers from LGBTQ plus owned businesses, women, minority, disability, and veteran all in one place. Wow. And there's not a summit that really does that anywhere in the nation that it's brings amazing. them all together and it leverages the Derby as a way to get people to come. Mm -hmm. um, but really thinking about how are we diversifying the supplier pipeline and how do we bring businesses together who are ready to be introduced into that area. And so that photo was from an identity aware or identity crisis, awareness crisis panel, mm -hmm. um, where we were talking a lot about the intersectional things that we've discussed today and how mm -hmm. does that impact business. Mm -hmm. And it was really wonderful to have, there was a, a senior VP in the audience who was a straight white man who came up to me afterward and was asking about, I, I don't know how to engage with employees and, and different people and ask about their pronouns and ask and under, seek to understand them in a way that's okay mm -hmm. and that's embracing and welcoming. And so having opportunities to shift minds like that has been really tremendous. I thought it was amazing and pretty bold of you all as a group to do it during Derby just because there's so much distraction. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, d I've done events and things. You can put a lot of energy into something and it's all well-meaning, but the timing might be off. But from the pictures I've seen, it was a pretty big success I and mean, there's a lot of people there. They've had growth every year. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be even bigger in 2020, so mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see where it That's goes. That's great. And the last picture I wanted to share, and I'm a little creative myself, <laughs> I wouldn't do a show like this. I thought this really spoke to you looking at your future. It's showing the evolution of Josh. What is this picture and when was it taken, that kind of thing? So The Voice does a monthly magazine mm -hmm. and they have started to engage, you know, regular community people in their fashion spreads rather mm -hmm. than just going for models. And so this shoot was part of Splash Into Summer. It was shot in June okay. 2019. And it was 15 of us from the community, uh, from corporations, from nonprofits, um, different community leaders mm -hmm. who were all there um, around the pool for this shoot and they were really wanting to lift up body positivity and self-acceptance and so it was really um, a wonderful opportunity to see different body types and different ages mm -hmm. all showing up in different types of swimwear and and kind of better understanding what the possibilities are mm -hmm.